Hey, what's up you guys? Today I am working on this illustration of a dagger and moth tattoo inspired design. So typically I am an acrylic and oil based painter, but lately I have been trying to expand my skill set in more water based mediums. One of the styles that I've been playing with is this very flash tattoo illustration style that takes great advantage of watercolor and ink. For this illustration, I am using Faber-Castell pit liners. They're India ink based and are great for line work that you plan on putting water over. I'm using a variety of sizes, but making good use of the 1.5 for thicker outlines and the extra small for some of the detailed lines. I'm applying the 1.5 for the main outlines of the dagger handle and moth wings, and then going back through with the extra small to capture some of the finer line details. I don't always use fine liners, and typically I do my line work with brush and ink, but I find that these fine liners really speed up the line work process and dry a lot quicker than traditional brush and ink. So now that I have the dagger and the moth handled, I can get started on the leaves. I'm using a medium liner to go over the outlines of the leaves since I really don't want them as emphasized as the dagger and the moth. I clean up the sketch lines with a kneaded eraser and then use my extra small liner to capture the veins of the leaf. I basically just want to establish the flow of the leaf and work my veins with that flow. After all the line work is done, I move on to the base shading. For my larger pieces, I typically use one really diluted ink base and slowly build up my values. But for YouTube, I decided to mix three or four different values to speed up the process. So off camera, I am looking at my original sketch to see where I wanted some of the darker values to lay. You have to be careful with this step because the gray tends to desaturate the colors you lay on top of it. So it's important that you test your ink and see how they look over a variety of gray values. So I'm just laying down the light gray values to give some directionality of light and shadow and kind of just going through and finding areas that I really want to stand out. For the leaves, I wanted the ones behind to be darker than the ones in the front. I use a mechanical pencil to estimate where I want some of the darker shades to go on the wings. You have to be really light with your pencils so you don't scar the paper and leave a pencil line behind.
So the yellow orange is actually a mix of FW Flame Orange and FW Red Earth. I find that the Flame Orange by itself is very yellow. If you saw my last video, the petals I did around the heart are done in pure Flame Orange, but they look pretty yellow. So I'm just laying down a heavy line of ink and then using a wet brush to fade the ink towards the lighter portion of the leaf. I'm going over all the darker portions with a more concentrated red earth color and then also fading it back into some of the lighter portions of the leaf. So ink reacts a lot differently than watercolor. You have to move rather quickly because ink tends to stain the paper and doesn't get reactivated by water like watercolor pigment does. I'm using a very bright yellow for the golden handle I was trying to create, but you start to see how the gray tones dull the yellow. So to combat this, I use yellow that has some orange in it to go over some of the darker areas.
I wanted the moth to be green just because I did very fall colors for the leaves and wanted the moth to really contrast against that. FW has a variety of greens, but I ended up settling for sap green as it doesn't have as much white in it and it seems to blend well with the flame orange color. So you can see in my palette that I have a variety of mixes and I tried to make three different green solutions so I could lay down some light values and dark values and some of the pure sap green for fading the tips of the wings. And that's pretty much it. 